I've been with the OAG almost three years now. I am Deputy Counsel representing the Maryland Department of Health. We represent all five hospitals that are housed in the Maryland Department of Health. Honestly, a great group of lawyers. Hardworking, dedicated, smart, represents the clients to the best of their ability, always willing to put down their work and help you with something. You know, we can all go somewhere and, and earn a paycheck, but when you do it and you serve the public, there's something extra in that. There's something that's rewarding in that. You know, I can say that I work for the citizens of the state of Maryland, and I'm proud of that. And who is your grandpa? Who was your grandpa? Major General Frederick Ellis Davison. He left us in 1999. He, like me, was raised by a single mom. Father wasn't around. His mom actually moved to New York to work as a housekeeper to earn money. And so he was really raised by his grandmother on P Street in Northwest Washington, D.C. They didn't have much, but you weren't going to leave the house with holes in your clothes. You were going to study and work hard, and you were going to get opportunities that your grandmother and your mother didn't have. And I think that, that helped formulate who, who he became. I was raised by my mother and didn't have a lot of contact with my biological father, so really was a father figure to me. Um, I can remember us you know, throwing the football in the backyard, uh, watching games together. We went to uh, what are now Washington Commanders games together. He had season tickets. A regular grandpa to me. I didn't know most of my life. In his den, he had you know, different awards, and there was a rifle that was mounted in his den. And I always wondered what that was about. It was an award he was given uh, when he ran the 8th Infantry Division in Germany. And so you just see these things, and as I got older, I started to ask a lot of questions. You know, kid questions like, you know, in the Army, did you ever shoot a gun? Did you ever kill anyone? And you know, things that a kid would want to know. But as I got even older, I sort of started to understand the story better. When they opened the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, which is near the Lincoln Memorial, I went to the opening with him, and I didn't really understand what was happening. And, you know, he was speaking, and there was, you know, just thousands of people out there, and there were reporters and everything. And that's when it sort of hit me, like, I think this is a big deal. I think this person is a big deal. He was the third black general in all of the Armed Forces history. He was the first black general in the U.S. Army. He was the first black to attend the Army War College. He was the first black to command a division. He was the first black to run the military district of Washington, which includes you know, the Pentagon and the various bases in this area. He was in charge of the 199th Light Infantry Brigade, which protected Saigon during the Tet Offensive during the Vietnam War, and that's actually how he earned his, his first star as a general. His commanding officer left to go on leave, and he's in charge of the whole thing, and there's supposed to be a ceasefire, and then all of a sudden the Tet Offensive happens, and you know, all of a sudden the country is invaded with the uh, North Vietnamese Army and the Viet Cong. So it's a, literally a surprise attack, and his job was to defend Long Binh, which was the largest uh, military base in Vietnam, as well as Saigon. I think the most important thing is he was a leader of men and he led men in combat and I don't think there's anything more difficult and trying than that and you got to remember this this happened during very very tumultuous times in our country and he had to lead black people and white people and you know Hispanic people and all these people into combat and I think that's probably the most significant thing this is life and death that we're talking about don't get me wrong we do important work here most of our work here is not life and death when it's life or death, I don't think you care. Where you came from, how much money you made, what God you worship or don't, uh, the color of your skin, it's about protecting one another. When he retired from the military, he went to work for Howard University. And he did not, not because he needed the money, because he wanted to have money for all of his grandchildren to go to college, so. So because of that, he was able to put all his grandkids through college. So he's the greatest man I ever knew.
would you say about your grandfather that you carry with you every day? Just that sense of being someone that uh, people can, can trust in and believe in. Your word is your bond. You say you're going to do something, you do it. And, and whatever you're doing, you do it to the best of your ability. So I think he wanted me to be a professional, a doctor, lawyer, something. But if I was a garbage man, be the best garbage man you could be. Get to work on time, work hard, be someone that people can rely on. I know that he's a huge influence in my life. And if I do things, even to this day, I always think to myself, what would he say if we were here?